Oh, it's good to be back, and the beard is slowly coming back. So people who were like losing their minds about me being clean shaven, it's fine. It's been sorted. This is the last of a kind of accidental trilogy of videos I've done alongside the Progressive Alliance video and the Lesser Evil video. I guess it's kind of a liberal trilogy, and this is going to be my last on this sort of topic for a little while, so uh, make the most of it while it's here. I guess it's a YouTube video. I guess it'll kind of always be here. Before we get into it, if you're here, there's nearly a 50% chance you're not subscribed. Yeah, I'm doing one of these. I, can't, I hate it too, don't worry. So, um, you know, why not subscribe? I hear it gives you superpowers. Worth a shot, huh? The sensibles, or a sensible, it's one of those phrases that I'll see on Twitter and intuitively know exactly what it means. But this is a YouTube video, so I can't just say, these sensibles sure are dickheads, aren't they? I mean, I guess I could, but that wouldn't really be much of a video. It might be fun though, so this video is going to be me trying to explain what sensible is in the UK political context and the way that various people use it. So we're going to try and figure out who these people are, why they're so desperate to be seen as sensible, and what we can learn from who it is they designate as sensible. So, kind of a short intro, let's get right into it. What the fuck is sensible? You probably have an idea of what sensible is. We're always told to be sensible in a variety of ways, and as a general rule, even if we kind of like to push the boundary of it, you probably recognise that taking a sensible course of action is generally good, you know? Most of the time it seems to be the right thing to do, even if it might be boring. You know, given the past few years that we've had, I imagine boring might be an improvement for some of us. So if you want to understand what sensible is, it's basically when I don't get an extra portion of chips at the kebab shop, or I actually managed to go to the pub for just one drink and get home nice and early. I realised by using that example, I've kind of made it sound like sensible isn't a thing that actually happens in real life, and well, there's kind of a truth to that, I suppose. Everyone indulges a little bit in something that they probably shouldn't be doing, you know? I'm guilty of it, you're probably guilty of it. That's all good and fun, but this is mostly a politics channel. So, what the fuck does the idea of being sensible have to do with what we usually talk about here? It's a good question. And like so many of my videos, we're doing shit liberals say that pisses me off. But I promise this will be the last in the liberal bullshit series for now until something else comes up that pisses me off. So, really what, I'm giving it a couple of videos? But we'll see. We might get lucky, we might have a streak where I just get to talk about fun things. If I were to ask you to place yourself on a political spectrum, don't worry, you don't have to tell me where you are, just don't go into the comments and be like minus eight, minus seven or whatever and just try and outleft each other. I mean, it might be fun, I, but you know, political compasses, uh, yeah, there's a whole thing and I'm not going to go on about it and I'm not going to go on about horseshoes, but you can check out my video on horseshoe theory for my generalized thoughts about trying to map politics onto Cartesian planes, which is that it doesn't fucking work, but you know, go have a look at the video. It's a good video. If you were placing yourself onto a political compass, you would probably, you know, be reasonably certain about things like whether you're left of center or socially liberal, but you probably wouldn't think that what you believe specifically is particularly outlandish or extreme. A lot of people, I would say most people, would say the ideas and beliefs that they hold are sensible, which is fair enough. I would guess that the person you're most likely to sympathize with and think that they've got the right idea is yourself. Which again, is fair enough. No one's mad at anyone for believing they're right. You know, unless they're demonstrably wrong or really offensive, but put that to one side for now. There's an implication in considering your politics sensible though, and it's actually quite similar to the train of thought that leads people, you know, to believe in stupid shit like horseshoe theory, which again, I did do a video on, so uh, check that out. It's that you're defining yourself against something else, often in this case, 
the way it's spoken about by the so-called sensibles is actually quite interesting because often you'll see people who are desperate to define themselves as sensible they'll go around using turns of phrase like adults in the room which just sets off so many alarms and perhaps indicates that they don't really think they're that sensible if they're they need an adult in the room at all times it's just it's baffling language i can't i'm already like losing my mind i've just started the recording the label the sensibles or sensible is also applied to these people in a mocking way so it turns out some people see this way of thinking as something that makes you act like a fucking dipshit a lot of the time which i suppose is a good time to put my cards on the table i think that in the same way that horseshoe theory is a laughably stupid thing to believe in the idea of a kind of political sensibleness is also fucking stupid. That's not to say you're stupid if you think you're right about political issues, but if you make being sensible your essential political characteristic, you're going to be at risk of making yourself look like a dickhead. Often, the people who this label is applied to are ones who use tortured phrases like the aforementioned adults in the room or who say things like the queen is gonna fire boris johnson or some stupid shit like that as a label applied to people it's meant to denote a person who's smug usually a liberal usually a centrist and usually someone with a platform probably a column in a national newspaper here's a thought though how do we define who the sensibles are and how do they present themselves in such a way that we label them as such? Also, why are they sensible? Is it pure self-interest? Is it that they want some kind of social capital? Is it just that they're plainly stupid people who are intent on driving their politics into a dead end? Well, I guess that's what I'm here to figure out, and that's what the next section's on. Who are the sensibles? And why? It's that time, it's the time where I get to define exactly who I mean by the sensibles, and there's really two particular types of person I mean for the purposes of this video, by the term. The first group are the more consequential, and who I'm going to be talking about the most. You'll probably notice an overlap between this group of people and the ones that I talk about in my very first video for the channel, the agrocentrism video. The first group are commentators, the commentariat if you will, but those who typically work at liberal outlets, some of them will even insist against all evidence that they're as left-wing as they come, which, sure, that might be true in their narrow world, but there's a whole world of wonderful leftism out there that they'll never get to enjoy. And part of the reason why they'll never get to enjoy it is because being a sensible in a political sense is a narrow and limited thing in itself. As a friend of mine once said about a writer's job that they had at a mainstream outlet, you can't espouse the immortal science of Marxism-Leninism when you're at one of these jobs. No, I'm not getting into whether Marxism is a science, I just do not have the time, but just take the point as it is, okay? Just, we'll move on. These are the people who you'll see saying stuff like hipster analysis or pining for a you know what? You know what? No, I'm, I'm not going to fucking explain it. I want to torture someone, so I'm going to have someone read a tweet out. Here it is. Clowns to the left of me. Jokers to the right. Here I am, patiently waiting for a witty, kind, centrist party to restore some sanity with you. Which, oh my god, I fucking hate it. Oh my god. Oh my god, I hate that so much. It's just so perfectly circular, I almost have to tip my hat to how many brain cells of mine die every time I remember this tweet or the particular political moment that this was happening in because God, it was obnoxious. Just so obnoxious. So part of this is that when you have a certain kind of position, your interests are narrowed. If the status quo works reasonably well for you, why would you want to change it? You know, unless you're some kind of ideologue, which there's nothing wrong with. There can be a good kind of class traitor after all. The sensible commentators, unfortunately, are not that. They, like the agrocentrist, have an interest in pushing a particular vision of what politics ought to be. Often it's expressed through the actually rather uncomfortable terms, you know, the adults in the room or grown up, as if everyone else is some kind of child in need of a parental figure to sort their life or their politics out. Just 
Take this passage from professional baby brain Ian Dunt. And either way, even if it all goes catastrophically wrong, at least we have a grown-up leader of the opposition who can read the public mood and is capable of exercising independent judgement. And that puts us in a much better position than we've had for the last five years. Time for a small, celebratory drink in our little lockdown bunkers. I know it can be hard to push through the smugness coming off anything that these people write, but let's try and see whether he's reeling off anything we've mentioned already. So he calls the new leader of the opposition a grown-up, so mark off parental issues on your bingo card. The interesting thing about this is in the phrase, even if it all goes catastrophically wrong, because that tells me, while it might not quite be just a game for these people, it clearly doesn't seem to impact them in a serious enough way for them to care or take it seriously. All that matters is that the person who they think is sensible is in charge. But we'll get to exactly what makes someone the right person to be in charge among the cult of the sensible later. The second kind of sensible you're likely to encounter are those who aren't necessarily in possession of a platform of their own. They might have one, there's even a little overlap with the first group, but it tends to be the kind of person who I would refer to as a briefcase wanker who falls into this particular category. And that's people who want this characteristic to be how they're perceived. Because, you know, you don't want to be perceived as a headbanging lunatic. Ah, oh, maybe a little bit. Which is curious to me, because if you're asking me, life is much more fun when you're headbanging. No, I'm not about to do it on camera. You've got to catch me on Twitch for that sort of thing. This second kind of person isn't usually that consequential, to be honest, and they're not really the important kind of sensible because they're much more led than leader. But that can tell us important things. They tend to gravitate to the kind of non-entities who are either the right kind of person to be in charge or to the inane media personalities who feel that they're the sort of senior members of the cult. So you'll see them in the replies of people like Stephen Bush, the aforementioned Baldy Locks, Ian Dunn, and unfortunately an awful lot of the kind of agrocentrist commentators who like to whip themselves up into a frenzy because the Jam Grandad didn't want to bomb people. There's a neat side effect of defining yourself against the idea of being irresponsible or childish or whatever else a sensible would label their opponent as. It means that you have a lot of flexibility to make sensible whatever it is you need it to be in a given moment, which might sound shallow and cynical, because it is. But if you have an interest in maintaining either the whole or part of the status quo, it's useful. This flexibility gives you the ability to regard quite a wide range of people as sensible, often crossing party political boundaries, tendencies within them, and of course borders. Which I suppose is the one good thing about it, because borders are a load of bullshit anyway. But that's a story for another day. In fact, when responding to a tweet asking which three MPs people would want to join the Cucktig Group for Change or whatever the fuck they were, I'll put their logo up because it was an incredible example of graphic design is my passion. Someone managed to produce a chef kiss answer, so let's check it out. In no particular order, Dominic Grieve, good loyally background, Hilary Benn, smart and sensible, Yvette Cooper, also smart and sensible. But I realised I've just robbed Labour of their best electoral chances. You'll notice that the people they pick are ascribed the traits of smart and sensible, which in the case of Hillary Benn is funny because he's a historically illiterate warmonger, or they have a good loyally background, which, not to be that guy, that's a profession that has a reputation for being full of dickheads who behave like lunatics, especially on social media. There's something that unites the people that the sensibles lord. One is that they tend to have some kind of bureaucratic record, either as a government minister or as a member of a committee, which, yeah, is about as consequential as it sounds. Or they're a politician who was formerly prominent, who for whatever reason they want to rehabilitate. A rehabilitation is going to matter a lot because a lot of the people they pick out have what we might call Spotty records, to say the least. There's a yearning at the heart of every sensible, and it's a deep-seated need for the restoration of a previous 
often imagined state of affairs. It's usually connected to a particular tone of politics, a more civil time, if you will, which plays into why the people they tend to turn to end up being faceless bureaucrats. I mean, look at all of the memes about Sue Gray, the person who's supposed to save us from Boris Johnson with a devastating report. Well, as of recording, nothing has come of Partygate other than a little bit of damage to the Tories' reputation for something that the very sensible people will decide is over, and not at all part of a wider structural issue the second the new Prime Minister appears. The other thing about who the sensibles think fits the role of the sensible, the adult in the room, they tend to be educated at certain institutions, speak in a certain way, look a certain way, and who seem like they're very risk averse, even if they're not actually necessarily risk averse. That tends to lead to the same kind of politics over and over again in an endless fucking loop. It's exhausting. Really exhausting. That's the thing that gets me about a lot of the sensibles. They have a sense, maybe not an incorrect one incidentally, but there's some kind of protracted crisis for their preferred status quo. A vaguely right of centre, vaguely socially liberal one. And there is, probably. There was, after all, a reason why The Guardian went so hard on the idea of populism. And despite its misuse by a lot of commentators, they weren't wrong that there was kind of a different sort of politics being pursued in the aftermath of the sensible consensus kind of collapsing post-2007. Of course, if you are a sensible, then you have to reckon with the fact that you're milquetoast reformism, at least when it is reformism and not conservatism, it's what led you to the crisis in the first place. So at best you'll see a return to sanity or common sense, which, you know, the air quotes are telling you what I think of that, but from a much weaker starting position, which means I wouldn't bet on this being a remotely viable political identity to cling on to, especially when we look at some of the recent case studies in Sensible. Case studies in Sensible. Before we dive right into the case studies, it's important that we understand something about the demands of the Sensible. They are pathetically modest. They're almost always just a plea to return to a tone that makes them comfortable. A less generous person would say that what they want is to be insulated from the consequences of their politics. After all, like I've discussed in, you know, basically every other video, life can be a bit difficult when people can just call you a dickhead because of what you believe in. Um, don't call me a dickhead in the comments though. As I mentioned in my video on online anonymity, those demands tend to come from people whose positions are the ones where people don't usually get to speak back to you. Not to be the social media can have an impact guy, but the cult of the sensible is a distinctly online brained thing. It's why I'm talking about it after all. But there's an unfortunate thing about it, which is, as I mentioned earlier, some of these people have significant platforms or are adjacent to people with meaningful platforms. So this brain poisoning from the online is seeping into the rest of the discourse like some kind of horrible polluting of the water table. This also goes for a whole host of other things and it's kind of sad what a significant part of the solution to a problem is we need these two to three hundred people to just log off for a bit. But that does seem to be where we're at. By the way, I will never log off. Do not tell me to log off. Cowards, I'm not logging off, alright? The thing is, it's hard to reconcile what these people say they want with who they choose to project the value of Sensible onto. Especially when a lot of what the Sensibles desire is a specific result rather than anything particularly values-based. The main result they seem to want at the moment of recording or writing, really both, is the resignation of the cursed mop that was brought to life by a warlock, Boris Johnson. That's good. Boris Johnson is shit. I'm glad we can finally agree that he's not suitable to be the Prime Minister, even though it took some of these people way too fucking long to get there. I'm not bitter, I promise. You can see the shallowness of it all when 
I show you things like this. In the last 30 years, we've had six Prime Ministers. John Major, Tony Blair, Gordon Brown, David Cameron, Theresa May, Boris Johnson. Say what you like about the first five, but there is no way any of them would have weaponized a serial child abuser to smear a leader of the opposition. I don't want to burst anyone's bubble here, but Theresa May joined in the Islamophobic smearing of Sadiq Khan, Tony Blair laid waste to a country based on a lie, David Cameron went around calling anyone who didn't want to bomb Syria a terrorist sympathizer, I'm particularly irked by these attempts to rehabilitate Theresa May just because she's done a speech that's mildly critical of Boris Johnson, which means that shit like the go home vans she was sending around, literally using fascist rhetoric by the way, are forgiven, and I now have to live through her girl boss redemption arc. Honestly, I wish these people would just fuck off and leave us alone. In a just country, like I keep saying, Theresa May would be breaking rocks on some lonely island and we'd never have to hear from her again. Instead, look at what we have to deal with. I just look at shit like this and lose my mind. Is everyone feeling okay? Genuinely. I have no idea whether this was some deep cover satire or a cry for help, which I guess kind of describes my own videos. Much to think about. Let's move on quickly. Take the curious case of Yvette Cooper, a middling politician who's often hyped up as a political titan. Why do these people seem to like her so much? Well, I'm not convinced that they actually do, at least not the real Yvette Cooper, because the real politician is a piece of shit and a massive loser. How massive a loser? Well, let's take a look at the one time she ran for Labour leader. Yeah, um, pinch the image off the BBC, but there you go. Not even come in second. Loser. Massive loser. And it's always worth looking at her endorsement by The Guardian in the 2015 leadership election for the Labour Party. I won't have it read out to you because, you know, it's an entire article, but I'll link to it below if you want the interesting statistic. In the actual article, there are three mentions of Yvette Cooper. Jeremy Corbyn is mentioned 10 times. This is the article specifically endorsing her. It's so embarrassing. It's so embarrassing. I can't imagine such an embarrassing endorsement. Now, we have to consider that she was getting tweets like this made about her after the embarrassing endorsement and after the embarrassing result. Let's just look at the tweet real quick. Worker B, take your politics out of the equation and look at things objectively. All resistance to Brexit is through FPPE, separate groups, and the backbench MPs from Tories and Labour. A Labour leader who would scare the Tories would be Yvette Cooper. Corbyn does not. Which is just, it just, it seems to exist in an alternative universe where there was a totally different person with the name Yvette Cooper. I would say it verges on a cult of personality, but there's kind of the prerequisite that some kind of personality has to be behind it to work. Which I guess means that her husband is barely more qualified, but only because his name is Ed Balls. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ed Balls is a name often featured alongside Eileen Over, Justin Time, and Mike Gapes in Totally Real Names magazine. For the record, her husband is also a solid gold twat, but the Sensibles don't seem to like him as much, at least when he's not making a tit out of himself on some sort of dancing show or whatever the fuck it is he does now. Yvette Cooper is actually kind of perfect for the role of the sensible saviour, since she'll never actually be in a position where her popularity is directly tested. Sure, she was Shadow Home Secretary for Ed Miliband, famously a really successful leader of the Labour Party. Okay, look, if I ever manage to say that with a straight face ever, you know I'm too far gone. It's done. I'm done. But she's gone back now to that role to much fanfare so i guess we're looking forward to some competent progressive political messaging like these mugs for example yeah those were real and you know they're plainly racist and pretty fucking shit so it's good that the grown-ups are back can't wait to see which mug they come out with next because of energy prices going up Controls on your thermostat, perhaps? Gotta keep it below 17, or else Yvette Cooper and Rachel Reeves will be by to cut off your heating. 
This is one of the things that's the most galling about it all. A lot of the sensibles like to pose themselves as progressives, which is largely a meaningless term, but let's pretend for a second that it means something serious. Now, you and I would probably say, if you were a progressive, you would probably not be doing things like this when you were a government minister. Yeah, I used it in an earlier video, but it's a good example of how the reality of these politicians doesn't quite meet the expectations these people have. This isn't a savior. I find it hard to believe anyone being serious about the sensible really knows what their anointed heroes are like, or if I was being more direct, they're unaffected by the worst instincts of these politicians. Something that was obscured by the 2019 election was the fact that the exact kind of people who the sensibles really like were leading parties and running in seats across the country. Take Squirrel Bane Joe Swinson. If there was someone who did literally everything the sensible said you should, like if you made a list, she ticked every box. It was her, right? up to and including calmly saying she would slam the nuclear bomb button, which is a crime against humanity. In fact, here's what some of her supporters were saying before she hit the campaign trail. I'm not sure I could take more strong and stable government with Johnson. But if chaos with Corbyn doesn't take your fancy, we could try a third way. There is always modern, smart and sensible government with Joe Swenson. Yet, she ended up running an abysmal campaign and ended up losing her own seat imploding upon contact with reality despite really inflated poll numbers early in the election. Also, look at the terms they use to describe her. Modern, smart, sensible. If that's the case, how come she lost so badly? Remember, she was running in that election honestly and sincerely saying she could be the next Prime Minister. Though, I guess it all worked out for her in the end. The bastard man lost and we were all saved from supply chain issues and inflate Oh, that's right. There's also the more clownish media party political project, the Cucks. Now, the less said about them, the better, to be honest. But when you're hyped up by the media as much as they are, and you simply do not exist almost as soon as the general election is over, some people might think you were running an elaborate grift, or a wrecking operation, or a waste of everyone's time. Though, in fairness, the memes were good before they were Spanos snapped out of existence by a small encounter with reality. That all leads me to wonder, is being seen as sensible worth it? Does it work? What does it all actually mean? All of that to come in the conclusion. Concluding thoughts. As I bring this to a close, I wanted to think about this. What is being sensible for? I mean in general. Why do we look both ways before we cross the road? Most of the time. Why do cyclists wear helmets? Or why is going to the pub for one drink a good idea sometimes? It's protection, safety, and prevention. All these things designed to defend your well-being, right? In a way, membership in the cult of the sensible represents just that. A flexible, sometimes antagonistic framework that allows you to defend your interests. Well, not your interests, probably, but the interests of specific classes. The other thing that struck me is how badly the Sensibles anointed ones seem to collapse upon contact with reality, which kind of makes me think, why bother? Like, we shouldn't bother. It's obvious it doesn't work, and if your politics are anywhere near where mine are, they're gonna call you a fucking communist anyway. So fuck it. Why concede to a framework that makes things worse, that makes it less likely for you to succeed? But for those people, I do wonder if they'll ever put two and two together and realize that even if it's not the ideas themselves causing their implosions... Okay, here's a little aside for you all and a little hint. It is the ideas themselves, but that's not the biggest issue for them. They could be more discerning about who they elevate. Ultimately for me, and likely for you, it's not worth it. Being seen as sensible isn't accessible anyway, so fuck it. Let's just want and advocate for good things and leave the sensible stuff to the losers. It's just more their style anyway. So, I want to thank my proofreaders, that is Mick Wright and my partner, and I want to thank the people who lent their voices to the various horrible things that I made them read and participation 
uh, Dr. Festy and Strang in the description below. You will find links to all of their nice things. Also in the description below, you'll find all of my links to various things. And before I disappear, I want to thank my patrons. So I'm going to just sort of slide on over and they will appear here somewhere, probably. Uh, future me, if you could edit that in now. Great. And I particularly want to thank Drone Riff, Mercutio, Nauseam, Kersley Scheider, and Wampus. Thank you very much. You are my top tier uh, patrons. I really appreciate it. If you would like to get your name on the wall, I mean, it probably won't be the wall eventually. I still need to figure out how to actually nicely present the patrons. Um, the Patreon is also going to be in the description. The lowest tier is one pound. Uh, even at that tier, you get to sort of vote on the video topics in the future. You get to sort of, um, you get to see some really cursed things that I find. And really, like, the £1 tier, well, really, the Patreon in general is just where I dump a bunch of stuff that I think is kind of interesting sometimes. And uh, if you go in the £2.50 or above tier, you get to hang out with me in the Super Secret Discord, where I uh, talk shit about people behind everyone's backs. I don't do that too much but you know um <laughs> it is it is just where i hang out most of the time it's the easiest way to reach me i chat about things i also ask for input on the videos also if you're at two pound fifty or above you get the videos a day early so you know lots of uh lots of cool things available for you at the uh, two pound fifty and above tiers anyway everyone i'm gonna get out of your way now and say bye uh don't be sensible don't be sensible it's not cool and it's kind of pointless catch you all in the next one